Welcome to First Lutheran Church of Chickasha on this, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We're going to have a more condensed service in order to make uploading that much easier and quicker. You are welcome to give your critique as you register either by text or on the church's phone. Let us begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our confession and absolution is taken from Psalm 51, verses 1 to 3. We speak responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. As we come before you, Lord, to confess our sins, we admit that we have been unappreciative of your great blessings of this creation and our recreation by grace through faith in Jesus. We confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and against others in what we have done and left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God is merciful and a loving father of whom there is no other. Besides him, there is no God. He has chosen you in the gospel, which has come not only in word, but with full conviction in power and in the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray the collect for the day. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The text for our meditation today is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, 
begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you're watching this service. Get a little closer to the screen so that you can see the images I'm going to show you. Does anyone watching want some money? You do? What will you do with the money? Well, those are certainly some good ideas. Let's look at some money this morning, shall we? Now, first of all, here is a picture of a $1 bill. All right? Do you, uh, 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 do you see what's on this bill? Now, uh, there's a man on it. You may have not learned yet, but that it man is named George Washington. He was the first, the number one, first president of the United States. Now, let's look at another one here. This has another man on it. This man's name is Abraham Lincoln. He was uh, one of our presidents also, and he was instrumental in getting our country through a civil war and freeing slaves, making it uh, freedom for everyone. Now, there's something else that you saw on the other bill and also on this one, and it's right here. Perhaps you can read it, all right? Some of you who can read it, read it. It says, in God we trust, all right? Let's see what's on some other bills. All right, this one is a $10 bill. It has a man on here. And his name is Alexander Hamilton. He was not a president of the United States, but he was the very first U.S. Secretary of the Treasury. A treasury is where uh, you take care of all the money. So he's important. You'll notice there's also that same phrase right there. And then there's another one. This one is a $20 bill. And that man is Andrew Jackson. He was one of the presidents of our United States as well. And you'll notice right here this phrase on all of our money. Now, if their pictures are on the money, does that mean that the money is theirs? No, the money doesn't belong to them. But in the gospel for today from Matthew 22... Can you say Matthew 22? Very good. We heard that in Jesus's day, the emperor or Caesar had his image on the face uh, of a coin. It's like that. That was his face. That's the emperor or Caesar. Now, there were also some words that read in Latin. We can't uh, necessarily read that right now, but when it's translated, it says 
that um, he is God and high priest. Now, was Caesar God? No, he wasn't. But he insisted that he was God and he put it on the money. That way, every time any person used the money, they were distributing that proclamation, that idea of who he was. Well, I want you to notice that phrase or remember that phrase again we looked at on our money. It says, in God we trust. That motto appears on all our money in the United States. That helps us remember that no matter how much money we have, whether it's a, a, a 20 or if it's a, a $1 bill or a whole bunch of them, it's God that we trust, not the money. And we don't trust in how much money we have or don't have. Instead, we trust in the one who provides us with all that we have. Our trust is in our God and Savior, Jesus. When Jesus was asked if people should pay taxes to Caesar or not, well, he said that we should respect authority, all authority, parents, police, government rulers like Caesar or like the president. There's a lot of disrespect going on these days. Don't you do that. We trust in God and we honor him who gave us the priceless gift of Jesus. It wasn't with money, but with his very life, dying and rising back again, he showed his love for you. No wonder we say, in God we trust. Let's pray about that. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us up to trust in you for eternal life. Amen. Thank you very much for listening to me. You can go and sit with your parents now as we continue with our service. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jake Olson was a senior at a Lutheran high school in California. Shortly after Jake was born, it was discovered that he had cancer in one of his eyes. They tried everything, but the doctors could not save it. He still excelled in sports, enjoyed all kinds of activities, but later on, the cancer resurfaced in Jake's other eye. Now, 
After numerous treatments, there was remission, and then there was returns, until finally the doctors recommended removing Jake's other eye. Totally blind now, Jake wrote a book entitled, Open Your Eyes, 10 Uncommon Lessons to Discover a Happier Life. Wow. In this book, Jake talks about coming to believe that God uses certain setbacks in our lives to create setups in which God will then be able to use us or work through us in the future. Now, that's a pretty incredible insight, don't you think, from a blind cancer survivor who hasn't graduated high school yet? In our text, when the Pharisees and Herodians came to Jesus in this gospel of Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22, they were hoping that it would be a setback to Jesus's ministry. But the setback they tried to create became a setup for Jesus to teach the truth and to save the world. Now, today's gospel takes place right after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And there he was, he was hailed and revered. But now, not so much. As the Pharisees and Herodians came to question Jesus, they tried to set him up for a setback. You got to realize, folks, that the Pharisees and the Herodians had vastly opposite views of theology and politics. Their hatred of Jesus, however, was far greater. It's a good thing, right, that we do not see a similar hatred uniting ideological opposite groups today. Why, that would be a mess. But do setbacks come upon us? Most certainly they do. We all endure them. We are no better than Jesus. In fact, a few weeks ago, we heard Paul warn us that we should expect the very same opposition because God's enemies are our enemies. They will certainly come after you because they came after Jesus. Let me give you some examples. When Jesus was accused of healing on the Sabbath in Mark 3, in the background, they were going, how can we get rid of this guy? His own hometown folk rejected his message and attempted to throw him off a cliff in Luke 4. And the Pharisees and teachers of the law accused Jesus of blasphemy for forgiving sins in Luke 5. And when he healed a blind man, the Pharisees concluded that Jesus was the devil casting out devils in Matthew 12. Well, there are so many more. But what we see in all of these is not a pattern of encouragement and support. No, but of setting traps and snares that will set his ministry back. And you should take that very personal because this ministry of Jesus is, remember, is your salvation and that of the entire world. Now, we know setbacks come. And we often take them in stride, like loss of a job or an illness or the breakdown of a relationship. And what do we do? We make a new resume, we send them out, we get a new job. We take the treatment recommended by our physician or we get a second opinion. We make an honest assessment of what we did that contributed to the loss of a friend or spouse or our children so that we can reconcile or at least not make the same mistake again. In other words, we try to learn, we move on. But often, what is crushing is when these setbacks come as the result of intentional and evil desires 
to hurt you. Normal, random trials are one thing, but someone who would do anything to bring another human being down is truly a shocking revelation. God knows what you go through, but he is not surprised at all as the Pharisees and Herodians join forces to entangle, that is to entrap Jesus. They sent their unintimidating disciples to make their phony flattery seem innocent. The Pharisees hated the tax, not just because of the amount, but because it went to a pagan ruler. So if Jesus supported taxes to Caesar, the people oppressed by those very same taxes would turn against him as, well, an idolater, right? The Herodians? No, they supported the tax. Make it bigger because they benefited from Rome's programs. But if Jesus declared them unlawful, <laughs> he could be targeted as an insurrectionist. So here's the thing. None of it was true. It was all made up. But so what? It suited their agenda. It suited their goals. Nonetheless, to you, to me, and to Jesus, such evil plots are not pleasant to watch, much less endure. Let us identify them in our own lives, in our own world, and know where they come from and how they have best been dealt with already. Of course, you remember that old adage, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? Our gospel story shows Jesus putting a squeeze on these sour pusses. They planned on trapping the teacher and setting back his popularity. But Jesus turns it into a setup for his own soteriological, that means saving objectives. First, the squeeze. Jesus pointed out their hypocrisy. These two groups, they didn't come to learn from him, and nor did they honor temporal authority God had already established on earth. We call that the kingdom of the left. And so Jesus' first response was, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. See, it's the reality that both groups were living under. In fact, that you and I live under. Civilization, structure, law and order are all necessary to curb anarchy. However, the bigger, the ultimate issue is the rule and authority God has over all spiritual matters. And so his second response was to render to God the things that are God's. The religious folk, they are not to create their own religion. And the secular, they are not to deny that God exists. God's authority in spiritual matters, we call that the kingdom of the right hand, is administered only through the good news of Jesus Christ. It's not by popes, it's not by emperors, scientists, or lawyers. And so what seemed to be the greatest setback Jesus' enemies could create turned out to be the very setup God wanted to redeem you and me. The cross, just a few days after our text, should have brought Complete defeat. The Christians themselves, the disciples, they ran away. They thinking, thinking that it was all over. And they were hiding in the fear of death. People today, even, they see utter loss in the crucifixion. And they remain trapped in their materialism. But in fact, 
The death of Jesus was the very way that God would set us free from sin and death. And even though Pilate and the Sanhedrin set up another trap using Roman guards and a Roman seal on the tomb, three days later, Easter proved God has set us up for perfect joy. Your faithful loved one dies, yet shall they live. Fires, riots, or natural disasters destroy your business, your house, your treasured pictures, and yet Jesus goes to prepare a place for you. Deceit and wicked traps attempt to slander a person's good name and dishonor their career. And yet the accuser will be silenced and you will shine like the stars in the heavens. The weight of sinful decisions and actions in the past may overwhelm you with the feeling of unworthiness and hopelessness. Yet, the forgiveness and grace that are ours in Christ Jesus calls us to stand firm and confident in hope. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Oh, dear friends, you are not let down. You are set up in the most enviable of all positions, sons and daughters of the king. I'm going to do something that they tell young preachers never do. I'm going to switch imagery. You see, you have been seeing the picture in your mind of traps and snares being cleverly devised and implemented for a setback but Jesus turned evil for good and set a setback into a set up for salvation. Now, listen to me. In basketball or really in any sport, there are plays designed to set up an open player for a big score. When the setup works and the quarterback has an open receiver, or the basketball player has an open shot at the basket with no opponents interfering, well, they got to take a shot. Our opponents, dear friends, is sin, death, and the devil. And they have been interfering and harassing humanity ever since the fall into sin on day eight. There is no one, believer or unbeliever who does not feel the pursuit and pressure every day of their life. But God, the Savior Jesus, took that setback and set up every Christian with forgiveness of sins and life eternal. And this place right here and this weekly time for encouragement and reinforcement by hearing and receiving it over and over again. You, my friends, have no sour obstacles, no bitter regrets, no terror of life's clock. When God gives you a sweet opening to help someone with your abilities and talents or comfort them with the assurance of grace and forgiveness or to direct them to Jesus who took their bullet and yet still lives today calling them to believe and live under him forever. When that happens, dear friends, take the shot. You have to take the shot. God has placed you there. He has set you up. All the interference is out of the way. Take the shot. Every setback is a setup for God's word, God's authority, God's gospel to push against the darkness that dwells in our own hearts, souls, and minds that tries to pit us against our neighbor. No, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, so that you can love your neighbor as yourself and as Jesus does. That is a Christian's gospel response, using God's authority to teach the truth and to save the world. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through true faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us at this time pray the prayer of the church. Lord, we come to you for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of our prayer and praise. You have blessed us with the gift of life in your Son, Jesus Christ. You provide for all our needs, even when we are unaware. Accept our humble thanksgiving and empower us to demonstrate our thanks in words, actions and, that are dedicated in service to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Savior Jesus Christ, this partisanship is getting this nation back to a lawless and pessimistic time. As you have established all authority over us, we pray for our leaders in this world, nation, state, and community. Remove their idolatry of power and humble them to be servants that they set up to act with justice and mercy for all lives, including the unborn and aged, the vulnerable and needful. Bless also those who serve our church as elected and called officials and the leaders within our own congregation, that all actions bring glory to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We acknowledge that you are the Lord, and there is no other. Strengthen us to resist temptations to serve other gods, whether things of this world, others, or ourselves. Open our eyes to see your presence in all of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those in need, the hungry and homeless, the mourning and grieving, and all who seek healing, especially we lift up to you those that we know. Renee Martin with crushed discs, we pray that the injections will give her relief and allow her back to work. We pray for Tierra Rowe as she uh, has her surgery on her hips delayed. And we pray that all prerequisites are met and she is able to get uh, that correction. Lord, we pray for Bob Walden. He is doing well. There is no infection and he is giving it a long time. No rush, uh, but to uh, get this new prosthesis that will fit and work for him. And we pray that all things work together for his good. Lord, we pray for Marcy Clark. She has these, this pain in her knees as well as the COPD and high risk that keep her from having any surgery on it. So give her relief, Lord, in any way, mental, emotional, physical, that she needs to endure, O oh Lord, as she looks to you for her salvation. We pray for Karen Collins, uh, similarly with osteoarthritis, very painful in her hands at this time. We pray that you will bring some relief through all of the medications that are available for that and directly through your all-powerful healing. Lord, we pray for Janelle Goulet as she has moved to a different apartment and it gives her more room. So we give you thanks and praise for that and that uh, she continues to have good company and caregivers. We pray for Dorothea Thorson. She too is homebound and just ask that as she has a, a damage to one of her, uh, one of her vertebrae, uh, we just ask that you will bring about a specialist that can relieve that pain and induce healing to that uh, bone. Lord, we pray for Bill Thompson at the VA Center, Evelyn Lyle at Glen Haven Assisted, and Jerome Ursuline at McAllister. Lord, give peace, hope, and healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who commune uh, at this altar today, that through the body and blood of your son, Jesus, 
They may be strengthened in your forgiveness, enabled to withstand temptations of the devil, and empowered to lovingly serve their neighbors in your name. Now into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now pray that prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I would like to share some announcements with you before our benediction. First of all, a voters meeting, even though you are home and not able to be there, is this afternoon at 1230. Uh, and people will be staying or going to get lunch and coming back for that. Some will not want to be uh, in the, the group, but they will Zoom in. If you're familiar with using Zoom, uh, if you will uh, make sure to text uh, me um, uh, Sunday morning, then I will try and to text back a code for you to uh, join that Zoom. Those who are here and sign up for that and go home will also be sent a Zoom code. Next Sunday uh, will be observed as our Reformation Sunday, and then the following, which is the 31st, will be All Saints Day. I wanted to give you some information. You may find this helpful or not. The Chickasha Soup Kitchen will be giving out non-perishable food boxes from the Oklahoma City Food Bank at the fairgrounds North Expo Monday from 5 to 7 p.m. and you can drive through. I uh, really encourage you to get there early and get in line because when they run out, they run out. Also, the USDA Farmers to Families program will be giving out perishable food boxes on uh, Saturday the 24th at Michigan Avenue Baptist Church from 1 o'clock to 4 p.m. Again, same thing. When they run out, they run out. So get in line early and and wait for that. Uh, so thank you very much. I pray that you will um, be able to take advantage of those particular benefits. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. To God be the glory.